This is the drill press rosette cutter available from LMI. It is designed to precisely and accurately cut rosette channels in a time efficient manner. Let me show you how to set up and use the tool. The tool uses a series of blades and spacers or shims placed in the base to cut the channels. Now the blades come pretty sharp right out of the box, but you can also hone them using your preferred sharpening method. LMI offers a set for cutting classical or single ring rosettes like this, or a set as well for cutting traditional steel string three ring rosettes. We have a traditional herringbone type pattern with a black, white, black inner and outer. So the first thing I did is made myself a work board out of a scrap piece of plywood. In the middle, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole, and then I countersunk that hole using a half inch bit, just a little bit. So this little metal sleeve that comes with the uh, cutter tool can be recessed in there just ever so slightly. We don't want it proud of the surface, just slightly recessed. Next, I take my rosette. In this case, I'm using the traditional herringbone type rosette for a steel string guitar, and I determine the inside diameter at the widest point. So I've determined that the inside diameter of my rosette is 4.74. I'm going to divide that by two to get the radius. That gives me 2.37. And then I'm also going to subtract another eighth of an inch or 0.125. That's going to give me 2.24. The reason why I'm subtracting another eighth of an inch is that I want to do my setup by measuring from here, the edge of the post, out to the cutters rather than the center of the shaft or the post there. If you want to also measure from the edge of the bearing here, you can. You just need to subtract 5 sixteenths from your uh, radius. When doing the setup, I find it convenient to just clamp the tool to the edge of the bench on a corner using two spring clamps. I then come in with one of the Allen wrenches provided with the tool and remove this little set screw right here on the end. So I'm going to start by setting up the inside diameter. And I come in with the long Allen tool also provided with your tool here, place it in here and adjust this screw in or out until I get the radius that I want. Now, in my case, I've determined that that is 2.24 inches. So I'll just adjust this screw until I get that. So I'm using the cutter head from the set that does steel string guitars and place this into this little slot here. So this is now set up that this side of the cutter head is going to be the inside diameter of my rosette. However, the beauty of this tool is you can do multiple channels at once, and I like to come over three millimeters and cut a black, white, black ring. So what I'm going to use is a shim that comes in the set for doing the steel string guitars. I've backed off this screw the amount that will give me the three millimeters plus the cutter for doing that 60 thousandths channel for doing the black, white, black ring. So this will cut the rosette inner diameter. This will cut the black, white, black ring. And then I just fill the rest of this gap with the shims that came from LMI in that set. Now just replace your set screw to lock it all in place. All right, let's do the outside diameter. So here I am again with my calipers and I'm going to check the outside diameter and I'm coming at 5.25 roughly. Basically, it's whatever your inside diameter is plus the width of your rosette. So once you figure out that measurement, divide it by two to get your radius, then subtract your 0.125 or your eighth of an inch. That way you can come from the edge of the shaft rather than the middle of the shaft when you're doing your setup. So once again, I have my tool clamped to the bench. And the beauty of doing this is that you can just place your cutter heads in there and they're all at the same height if you just bottom it out on the table there. So I'm going to start by removing the set screw here. That gives me access to that inner screw inside there. I come in with the longer Allen tool. I adjust that screw in or out to give me the uh, radius that I need from the edge of the post here to there. Now, what I've done is a little finagling here. Since I'm going to cut the outside diameter, I've placed this in here, then my cutter head, and that will give me the outside diameter of the rosette. The other side is cutting the inside diameter and the black, white, black ring. Now I'm going to put a little spacer shim in there of three millimeters. And then another cutter head. And that will cut the 60,000 slot for the black, white, black outer ring. Now I've run out of shims, so I just made one. This is made out of ebony. You could use any type of stock or material. Just place that in there. Then I come in with my set screw again and place this in here. 
That will lock it all in place. Everything's up tight. Everything's at the same depth because I have it all bottomed out on the table. There we go. Now, if you decide to do this tool to do uh, classical guitar rosette channels, those little set screws down inside there, you'll need to take one out and then put a bunch of spacers on this side. That way it allows you to get a smaller diameter, which usually the classical guitars are a little smaller than your steel string guitar. So just pull that set screw out, start stacking everything up into there a little closer for your inside diameter. Your outside diameter will be fine. Now we're ready to go to work, right? Wrong. The first thing you want to do is test. If you need to make minor adjustments, it's better to find out about it now than after you've gone to your nice expensive top. So let's go to the drill press and do some tests. It's extremely important that your drill press is set up properly. You want your table exactly perpendicular, 90 degrees to the shaft of the drill press. What I'm using is just a dial caliper here that I can swing around and it tells me if my table is indeed perpendicular. I think I actually even got this tool years ago from LMI. I guess you could also use a square if it came to that, but make sure that your table is perpendicular to the shaft. So I have the tool in the drill press. Here's my work board that has that quarter inch hole in here for the guide bushing. And here's my sample piece. This is just a scrap piece of plywood and I've drilled a quarter inch hole there. I'm gonna take the drill bit, put it in there, align that hole with the quarter inch hole guide bushing here. Once everything's aligned, I'm gonna clamp my sample board to my work board. And now I can remove the drill bit. This then gets placed on my drill press table, raise the drill press table, and then align the hole with the shaft of the tool. I'm going to lock that in place in the down position for now. That allows me to come in and put some clamps around here and clamp this to the actual table of the drill press. To do that, I'm just using cam clamps here, come in and over the top of everything. Obviously, you don't want to get it close enough where it's going to hit the tool. Happened to a friend of mine once. With everything clamped in place, I'm now going to release my depth stop. If you want to come in, if you have the capability in your drill press to set the depth, you can go ahead and set the depth of cut to the depth of your rosette channels that you want. Also bump the RPMs down on your machine. I happen to be running at about 600 RPMs. You don't want to be running any faster than about 800 RPMs. Also, when you start your initial cuts, go very, very slow as the cutters make contact with the surface. Here we go. Now for your initial test cut, you don't need to go very deep. Let's pull it out, check it, make sure everything's okay. You can make some final adjustments with your inside and outside diameter if you need to, then you'll be ready to go back to work. So here's what I've got, a black, white, black inner and outer ring of 60 thousandths, three millimeters on either side of that is the rosette channel itself. Let's check it and make sure it fits. And what do you know, it doesn't fit. You can always take more, it's hard to put it back folks. So err on the side of caution. Looks like I need to open this channel up just a little bit. Now I need to decide, am I gonna adjust the inner diameter or the outer diameter? So let me just take a quick look at that. To me, it looks like it needs to be the outer diameter. Inside diameter is looking pretty good. So it's the outer diameter. So let's do a little adjustment to the tool before we go back to work. So with my tool clamped to the table again, I'm gonna come in and release the set screw. With that out of the way, I'm not gonna pull my cutter heads out. And I need to adjust that outside diameter out just a little bit. This is all done by trial and error, folks. So with the screw adjusted, now I'm gonna place everything back in in the correct order. In my case, the 60 thousandths cutter head, that's for the black, white, black. Then a three millimeter shim. Then the cutter head for the rosette itself. And then a couple of spacers here with everything in place, come in and put the set screw back in. Let's go do a test piece. So I've made my adjustments to the cutter heads. I've got everything clamped back on the table. Let's see how we did. So after another adjustment, let's check and see. Here we are with the rosette. It's a snug fit but it works. Look at that. Let's check the black, white, black channel or the 60,000th channel. 
that's going to work too. So we're good to go. Now, I made that look easy, folks. I only did a couple of adjustments. I've used the tool before. Your results may vary. It may take you several attempts to get it set up just right. But once you get it set up, you're good to go. Here's another little hint. If the rosette is fitting in some parts of the channel, but not in the other parts of the channel, you don't want to adjust it and make it bigger because then it would fit where it was tight. It would be loose where it was already fitting. So just take a razor blade. Come in. Just scrape some off in the tight area and then place it right back in and you're good to go. Rather than cutting the channel too wide, leave it snug and scrape down the rosette. With everything now set up and tested, I can go to work. So here we are after the cut. Let's make sure it fits. And what do you know? Let's check the black, white, black. There's the outer. And here comes the inner. There it is, all ready to be glued. Now, your initial setup time will probably take you a lot longer than what I did. Also, you could probably install a rosette quicker if you're just doing one. However, if you want repeatability, this tool is a real time saver.